buttons, guys. Buttons and t-shirts. Take your meds. You guys got a fantastic setup here. It's a wow. work in progress. It's <laughs> That's great. TSA style check ins. Porta potties. It looks like an F80 some. G33, George.
this entire event here with the National Anthem and her music. Lori, thank you so much for all of your help. It was wonderful. Thank you. Now, I understand we also have Todd Helton here, first baseman with the Rockies. And of course, you have your Congressman Cory Gardner here who's running for re-election. Make sure and get him in office again. And thank you to your great former Governor Bill Owens, a great friend, a great man, a great playwright. Now, I just had the opportunity just a few moments ago. I don't know whether you got a chance to meet her, whether, whether you got to see Dee Dee Parrish. Did you see Dee Dee Parrish? You, uh, she must be up there somewhere. Dee, uh, Dee, I just met, she's a lovely woman. She flew in the Second World War. She flew B-26s, and uh, she's here. I want to recognize our military champion. She received the Congressional Gold Medal for her service in our military. We're surrounded by the, 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 the sights of those that stand up for our freedom. This is a great place to be here at the foot of the Rocky Mountains. When I was a boy, my mom and dad used to read to me from a book called Men to Match My Mountains. Perhaps we should change the title to Men and Women to Match My Mountains because right here, men and women have matched the mountains of Colorado and they match the mountains in aircraft like that. This is the home, of course, of the Air Force Academy. This is, a, this is the home of NORAD that helps keep our, our skies safe. This is. This is the home of Focus on the Family, which is committed to preserving the foundation of America. This is the home to great institutions of higher learning. It's also home to a pretty darn good football team. And one more thing. I think this is going to be the home of the place that elects the next president of the United States. surrounded the debate, and people want to know who's going to win, who's going to score the punches, and who's going to make the biggest difference in the arguments they make, and who's going to be all the scoring and winning and losing, and, you know, in my view, it's not so much winning and losing, or even the people themselves, the president and myself, it's, it, it's about something bigger than that. But these debates are an opportunity for each of us to describe the pathway forward for America that we would choose. And the American people are going to have to make their choice as to what kind of America they want. And so I look forward to these debates. I'm delighted that we're going to have three debates. It'll be a conversation with the American people that will span almost an entire month. We'll get to describe our respective views. And I believe that the people of Colorado will choose a better way forward for our country. We can't Now, the president's pathway is, uh, is not something which is unknown to us. We've seen the pathway he's proposed over the past four years. As a matter of fact, we, uh, we heard his, uh, his speech not terribly far from here, about four years ago, about where he would take the country. And he's fought for some of the things he described there, a bigger government, taxing our people more and more. He believes in picking, he, he believes in picking winners and losers. He put money in a whole mess of companies, about $90 billion in the green energy companies like Solyndra and Tesla and, and Fisco. A friend of mine said he doesn't just like picking winners and losers, he likes picking losers. <laughs> His pathway is a path that would dramatically shrink our military. His budget calls for hundreds of billions of dollars in military cuts, and then on top of that was this sequestration deal that puts even more cuts on top of that. That will mean thousands of jobs lost here. It'll mean millions of jobs ultimately lost across our great nation. I do not believe in shrinking our military. I believe it must be second in the world. We 
know where the president's pathway leads because we're on it. We've seen it for four years. We've seen the number of people on food stamps go from 32 million to 47 million. 15 million more people having fallen into poverty and needing food stamps. One in six Americans now in poverty. 23 million Americans looking for a job. 23 million. We've had 43 straight months with unemployment above 8%. And what does the president have to say to all this? He says forward. I think forewarned is a better term. We, we listened to the president at his convention just a few weeks ago. No new ideas. He's out of ideas. He's out of excuses. And on November 6th, they're going to put him out of office. There are five things we'll do to strengthen our economy and create 12 million new jobs and rising take-home pay. You realize over the last four years, every year you see the median income in America come down. Income is down some $4,300 a family. And with the median income of about $50,000, that means things are really tough for the American people. The middle class squeeze has been unbearable. Gasoline prices way up, food prices up. Electricity prices up, health insurance costs up. The American middle class is struggling under this president. And my plan, and Paul Ryan's plan, to create five steps to get this economy going will help middle income Americans have a brighter future and will lift people out of poverty. And let me tell you what those steps are. Number one, we're going to fully take advantage of our oil, our gas, our coal, our nuclear. China, China has cheated on trade. I will crack down on them. We will not allow China to steal our jobs. I'm very Number three. Number three, I want to make sure our workers are getting the skills they need in training programs that work for them. Right now, we have 47 different government, federal government training programs. 47. They report to eight different agencies. Think of all the overhead, all the waste, all the duplication. I want to take all that money and give Colorado its fair share and say, you create the program that works best for your own people. <laughs> and making sure our people have the skills to compete. I not only want to help our People that are in the workforce today, I want to make sure that our kids are getting the education they need. And for that to happen, it's time to, uh, for us to fully recognize that we have to put our kids and the parents and the teachers first and the teachers union behind. requires entrepreneurs to take the risk of opening a, a business. Small businesses have to grow and thrive. And it also takes big companies to decide to build a new facility in America and to hire more people. For those things to happen, they've got to be convinced that America is not on the road to Greece. Because if they think America is going to have the kind of economic circumstances Greece now has, they're not going to risk their life savings to start a business. 
And so what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to cut federal spending. I'm going to cap it as a percentage of the economy and finally get us on track to a balanced budget. And there's one more. And there's one more. And that's, and that's this. We have to champion small business. We have to make it easier for small business. Now the president, the president has a plan for small business. Out of a million small businesses, he's planning on raising their taxes from 35% to 40%. That, that will kill jobs. That will kill jobs. The National Federation of Independent Businesses asked Ernst & Young to, to look and see what impact that will have on America. And the answer is, that will cost 700,000 jobs. I don't want to lose jobs. I have a plan, by the way, that adds 7 million jobs. My tax plan does this. It brings down the tax rate. It brings down deductions and credits for high-income people. It brings down that tax rate so that small businesses can afford to hire more people. My priority is jobs. Jobs is job one in my administration. We're going to get America working again by helping small businesses. And let me mention, let me mention one other thing. If the president succeeds in something he's pushing very hard, which is something known as card check, for those of you not familiar with it, it's this. It says we're going to take away from the American worker the right to vote by secret ballot as to whether or not they want to have a union. And on that basis, on that basis, a, a guy or a gal could be in their backyard barbecuing with their kids and some people could come up and say, here, sign this statement. We want you to vote where we can watch you vote. In a setting like that, you're going to see coercion and you're going to see small businesses overtaken by unions. And I'll tell you this, entrepreneurs aren't going to want to start a business if that's the case. If card check goes in place, it will kill America's entrepreneurial economy. What the president is doing is bowing to the demands of big labor, to his big contributors. It's wrong. It would kill our economy. I'll stop that in its track. We must have people have the right to vote. I speak it now. Those five things, those five things I've described, will create 12 million jobs. And as those jobs are created, there'll be more competition for workers. And as businesses compete for workers, they're gonna have to drive their wages up and their benefits up. So you're gonna see rising incomes again. Look, these years we've experienced for the last four years, we don't have to experience for the next four years. This president is taking us on a path that's not working. He's making us more and more like Europe. I don't wanna be like Europe. Europe doesn't work in Europe. principles that made America the nation we are. We are an exceptional nation. The, the exceptional, I believe the exceptional nature of this country was established when the founders wrote the Declaration of Independence with these insights. First, that our rights were given to us not by government but by the Creator. and liberty. That's why we have a strong military to protect our lives and secure our liberty. Life and liberty and the pursuit of happiness. The ability in America for people to pursue their dreams. And every now and then someone has a great idea. That's their dream and they build an enterprise and employs hundreds, thousands of people. I see it day in and day out as I see the entrepreneurs of America. It's what makes our economy go. A bigger and bigger government taking more and more, demanding more and more, more and more intrusive in our lives will not make America stronger. Instead, restoring freedom and opportunity will get America to work again and I'll do it. And it's important. This is important. This election is not just about four years. It's about the course for America over decades. We're going to make a choice now which is going to affect the lives of our kids and theirs. It's important. 
People need to pay attention to the path that we're on and ask, do we really want to keep going down that path? Or can we instead, or can we instead take a path that will get us working again, restore the principles that made America the hope and passionate leader and protector of freedom that it's always been? I was in Poland a few weeks ago, and I got the chance to meet a world hero, Lech Walesa. And, uh, He was the guy that stood up in the Soviet Union from the gates of the Gdansk shipyard. And um, I came in to see him. He looked at me and said, you've come from America. You must be tired. You, you sit. I'll talk. You listen. <laughs> and so I sat. And, uh, and then he said this repeatedly. Where is American leadership? We need American leadership. America's the only nation on earth. It's our turn. We've got to grasp that torch and hold it on to the world of freedom. I, I make this commitment to you. If I'm elected, when I'm elected president, I start. I will do everything I have my power to keep America strong to strengthen our values in our homes, to strengthen our commitment to our principles, our founding principles. I'll do everything in my power to get this economy going again, lifting all people, helping all people in this country. And I'll make sure our military is second to none, so strong, no one will ever make the test of maybe two or three or four or five, and convince them to come join our team. I need you to go out and find people and say, you know what? It's not working. We need some of the biggest Americans going again. I will, with your help, we're taking back America. We're going to get it strong again. We're going to strengthen America from the very foundation. I love this country. I love you. Thank you for your help. Let's win this one for